Hi, this is going to try to be a short video about my latest project. I haven't scripted it, I'm sorry, so it'll be a little bit rambling, but I'm going to try to just show you real quickly on what I've done and, uh, and why it's so interesting. Um, first, a little background. Um, there's a program called the Robot Operating System, or ROS, and this is what um, some colleges and some companies and some groups got together, and they took some of the really complicated pieces of robot building, and mainly the software, and they put it into a system that can be uh, put together to use on almost any robot, and it's easy, it's very modular, and it's easy for anyone who has a little bit of computer knowledge and some programming, just... Uh, skill, it ought to be a programmer, just some basic skill, you know, um, can, can put all this stuff together and they run this on, you know, quarter million dollar robots, but there can also be run on lower end robots and it's really exciting. So something that was done by one group, they said, hey, you know, there's these really fancy expensive robots that are running ROS, we know we can do it with home built robots, but it takes people a lot of time to try to build these robots and sometimes they spend so much time doing it they never get to actually do anything with the robot. Um, so that's when someone made something called the TurtleBot. Um, the TurtleBot is this little small robot. It's based on a vacuum cleaner base. Have you ever seen those vacuum cleaners that run around people's homes? Um, that's what it is. They've just uh, added on top of it, and they use um, one of the things that really is useful for a robot is a laser scanner. Those are like you know, thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, very expensive. But they figured out a way to use a Connect from an Xbox um, to. Uh, basically mimic the laser scanner, and then they put that on this vacuum cleaner base, put a few um, little you know, platforms on it, and, and then you put a computer on here, one of these platforms, and you can run robot operating system on a com robot that'll cost you under $2,000. It's pretty amazing. Um, now, I had already been thinking about building a robot before I found out about Ross, and I wanted to use something that was a little more robust, um, had some more other options, um, you know, the vacuum cleaner has some weight limits, so I'm using something called the Arlo Robotic Platform, made by a company called Parallax. And what this is, is it's a kit. Um, some of the parts you just bolt together, some of the parts you have to solder. Um, but it's all there. They've got everything. It's not like you have to engineer it yourself. You can put it all together. Um, they have their own microcontroller. And you can put this all together and make your own basic robot. Um, and then I've written some code to run on the uh, Parallax propeller board that's the microcontroller for it that allows me to interface the robot operating system with um, the Arlobot. So it wasn't too difficult really. I'm mostly just using the TurtleBot code um, to talk to this. You know, I just had to write the in-between pieces um, because the, the Arlobot is a round robot with a differential drive a lot like the uh, TurtleBot really. It's just bigger and um, the weight capacity for the um, for the Arlobot uh, with the metal wheels is it's about 60 pounds, so you can put anything you want on it. It's really fun. So let me get going here. Um, it all runs on Ubuntu Linux. There's actually a laptop on this robot. You can see here I've got a live video of the robot going right here up in the upper right corner here. Uh, that's my little Arlobot. It's got his little ping sensors around the front. And by the way, those are just for obstacle avoidance and, and for if you're operating it by hand or you can you know run some little programs on it. But um, the, the ROS uses uh, up on top there, you see what it, it doesn't, it's actually an um, ASUS uh, Exgen. Um, it's like a Kinect, basically. It's just a smaller model that ASUS made for um, developers, but it's the same. You could use a Kinect up here. It's just this was a little smaller, lighter, and the power requirements are easier. And you can see I've got a laptop there that I got off eBay. Um, it has a nice reversible screen, and it's running Ubuntu. And then the bottom right here, this, this screen here, is actually my uh, a, a remote connection to the Ubuntu laptop on the robot. So I'm going to start up. Uh, the way ROS works, it's lots of modules. So you start them all up. And um, the benefit is it's easy to you know work with each little module, get it figured out. Um, and you can see the robot is actually started up there. And now I'm going to start up the um, what they call the, the G-mapping part. Uh, this is a, um, a um, the part that actually can uh, be used to. What we're going to do here is we're in this room. and. We're going to make a map of the room from the robot. Th this is the really cool part. This is the, the location um, acquisition and mapping. Um, so let me now up here on the left here is another Ubuntu. It's an Oracle virtual machine instance of Ubuntu that I can run here on my Windows desktop. And that way I can run um, um, uh, Frost on my desktop computer without having to install uh, Oracle on it. Um, so this is another instance of Ubuntu. They're talking to each other over the Wi-Fi network. So now you can see a picture. Here's my little robot, a little model of it. That's a real you know, 3D model of the robot um, actually in the computer. And it's showing you what it sees. It sees in front of a, a wall that it's looking at, and it's giving, getting the distance. And that's simulating a laser scanner, like even like a, like a robotic car would use to figure out where it is. Um, 
So now I'm going to go to the next, and here to start with, we're just going to um, do what's called a keyboard teleop. I'm just going to operate it by keyboard. So we'll see it moving around. And there she goes. And um, as she goes, you can see that it's actually seeing, making lines to make a map of the room. And the line is just going to show you where it is real time. I don't have any um, decay set on it, so it's going to actually, you're just going to see uh, the real time. But, but as we drive around the room, the interesting thing is here that it's going to actually make a map of the room it's in. So instead of um, us having to tell it, you know, this is what the room looks like, it's going to be just like you and I. We look around the room and you go, oh, well, here's the walls, here's the, you know, here's the, the obstacles in the room, and, and slowly make a map. But the other thing is that um, the map making program here, it's using the um, encoders on the wheels to understand, you know, how far it's driven, how far it's turned, giving you a, um, giving an idea of where it is. So that way, you know, when it runs down the room, it says, okay, there's a wall here, I've driven three feet, that wall must be three feet away. But your um, odometry is limited, uh, your wheels slip, your, you know, you have, you know, accidents, bumps, whatever. It's not perfect. So also, it's using this map to say, hey, where am I? And as you watch the screen, um, you'll actually see once in a while the robot kind of gets lost. And then the, the software actually says, oh, well, you know what? I know your wheel said you went three feet, but I think you went three and a half feet. And that's what this um, part of what this simultaneous location, um, location and mapping can do for you. So right here before our eyes, we're actually making a map in real time of the room that we're in. And um, just drive around, and you can see, I know you can't see the whole room in my little video there because I've just got a stationary camera, but you can kind of see that it's actually seeing those boxes there in the middle. And um, this is a pretty simple room. I've made a point of, you know, blocking off anything that would be open. Um, as you drive around, you're going to see over in the, on the right side of that room, um, there is an open door. So it's just going to kind of look off into the distance there and not know what to do with that. But, but for the rest of the room, um, it's going to have a pretty good clue, you know, where it is, what it looks like, where it can be, and uh, you just you drive around my hand, um, and, and eventually, you know, this it'll it'll make this map for us. Um, Okay, so I paused the video there for a little bit just so you could kind of, you know, get a ch yeah, not have to watch me keep driving around to make the map. But there you can see there's a map. You can imagine there on the computer there. Um, we actually kind of move this around and, and spin it, and there you can have the map kind of match um, exactly you know, what the room looks like. So there you go. Here's our robot. There's your little section of the tubs in the middle of the room, and there's the rest of the map. And, um, and th you know, this now we have a map of the room. And one thing that's interesting is you can actually drive around on this map. You know, you don't need to know anymore. Of course, we have the camera over there, but you don't need that because the robot can actually see where it's at, can see what's, you know, um, in front of it, and it can complete its own map. Okay, so now that we've got our map made, we're just going to make another um, instance here. And we're going to save off a copy of this map. There we go. Now I've got a now we've got a saved copy of that map, and we're actually going to shut off the uh, mapping part of the software. And then what we'll do is we'll bring ourselves back into the navigation part. We'll actually restart our um, visualization here once we know that our navigation program is working. Udom received. Get rid of all the little thingies that we don't need to see. Let's move that map around so it looks like what we're seeing. 
just because it's more fun that way, even though the robot doesn't really care. And a little more rotation there. Now to start with, it's going to kind of try to guess where it's at. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a 2D pose estimate. So we know that the robot's right next to those tubs. So we're going to just say, okay, you're this is where you're at, and then you point the air direction it's facing, and that says, hey, you know, this is where you're at, like an estimate. And now you see all those little arrows. It's kind of where it's guessing. It's using that information to say, okay, I think this is where I'm at. And then finally, um, again, you know, it's what it's doing is just looking around itself and saying, okay, based on what I see, I think this is where I'm at. But we're just going to rotate the robot real quick and look at all those arrows suddenly they just get way less and suddenly the map gets really um, tight because it's like okay now I'm really sure where I'm at because I've seen everything um, if you had like you know one of those five thousand dollar laser scanners that was you know 360 degrees then you would uh, not need to do this but our our um, connect type sensor just sees forward so we have to rotate so now this is what's really fun and if you think about it you can really apply this to lots of scenarios we've got a map we've got a robot I've turned off the uh, keyboard operation. Now we're going to set a 2D navigation goal. What we're going to do is say, hey, I want you to be here, and I want you to be facing that way. Makes a plan, it drives. Now you've got an actual robot operating. Let's do a more complicated one. Here's a 2D nav goal. I want you to be over here, and I want you to be facing. Now let's turn around. So let's see over here, but you're facing back that way. What's it going to do? Okay, it's made a plan here. It's going to turn around. It's going to drive over there. It's doing this all by itself. All I've done is told it where I want it to be and which direction I want it to be facing when it gets there. And now it's actually driving around and going to that location all on its own using a combination of the map that it's already made and seeing the surroundings. Um, if the odometry gets confused, if it slips, it can use the map to refresh itself and say, well, you know, obviously my wheel slipped. I think I went three feet, but I went two. Um, this is really the exciting part about um, this robot operating system because what we're doing right here is complicated um, and it's not an easy thing to program yet all you have to do is set your robot up um, put, fill in your parameters add the code and a Unix administrator like myself can make a robot and start telling it where to go and you can just imagine the, the possibilities here um, you know because while I'm, I'm drawing these little arrows here and telling it hey this is where you can need to be and you could actually pre-configure these locations then you could put in you know operation where you talk to your robot so say you say hey robot go to the kitchen and if it already knows a map of your house already has a tag saying where the kitchen is you could just talk to it so Anyway, that's my latest project. That's what I'm having fun with. And um, now you've seen the, uh, the Ross operating system and the Parallax Arlobot in operation. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll try to come back later with some more detailed videos where I show you know, exactly how I do some stuff. And if you're interested, I can you know, video the pieces of the robot and show you how it all works and what it looks like. Thanks a lot.